Hi, and welcome to the first 10 minutes of Ex Machina. We're going to go ahead and review it. So I have seen this movie much like I've seen every movie. I'm telling you, it is so hard to find a movie that I haven't seen to do like a reaction. But what I'm really trying to do is pick out movies that maybe you haven't seen, maybe you've heard of and you heard it's great or whatever, but just to kind of bring you into the movie, show you the first 10 minutes, show you what's intriguing about it, what the screenwriter has done to, to make it worth your time to keep watching. So that's what I'm trying to do. I hope if you're looking for a movie, you watch some of my videos and you go, oh yeah, you know, I could see why that's interesting. Or if you're currently writing a script, you can see what techniques you can use to write a better script. So Ex Machina, it's such a quiet movie. There's um, lots of scenes where there's not a lot of dialogue. It's very visual, which is what we're doing. We're making visual, it's a visual medium. So less talk, more visual is fine. If you can convey it. It has a great theme about AI. Since it's even been made, I mean, when it was made, I don't think you know robots were at kind of level that the movie is portraying, which now we kind of are. So it's maybe, I don't know if it's creepier or less creepy, you know, watching it. I really liked this movie and I think it's very well written. It's clear who the characters are right away. It's very intriguing as to what's going on. And um, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler because the robot is featured on the uh, post. How are humans going to relate to when you have real robots with some type of AI going on? So let's watch the first 10 minutes and see if we are sucked into this story. Is it set up well? Are we interested? Do we care about what all is going to happen? And what's really interesting is you start to care about the robot through this. So see, just visuals, just we understand tech company, right? Looks like it's a first prize in the staff lottery. congratulating him so I get the idea he's liked enough that people aren't jealous of him and then right into these visuals we went from a tech thing to an ice field how long until we get to his estate <laughs> we've been flying over his estate for the past two hours so I just want to point out that I read that the original script had about, I think it was six pages, maybe it was only four pages of dialogue as he was communicating with the pilot to kind of give you that feeling uh, about where he's headed to. And ultimately the screenwriter said, you know, what are we really trying to say here? We're just trying to show how rich this guy is, right? So all of the dialogue was like, what one line of dialogue will convey that message? So it says, when will we be on his property? And he says, we've been flying over for the last three hours, which I mean, that just sounds like vast, right? Flying over three hours, so excellent. You can say it in one line or two lines. Don't say it in three pages. Nobody wants to watch that. Just the scenery is just incredible. I actually don't know where this is filmed. This looks like Canada though. So we already get the idea. This guy is mega rich and this is super remote. Keep your head down and get clear of the rotors. So even right here we have man versus machine, right? So he says you have to get clear of the rotors, right? So he says follow the river to get to the house. This is as close as I'm allowed to get. And now this guy is gone. So and the silence is deafening. Complete isolation. In a scene. We're already, you know, two and a half minutes in, three minutes in, and we get the idea. This guy is a little bit fish out of water. Tech guy. <laughs> Who's just been dropped off at a humongous estate owned by a super rich guy. And nobody's there for miles. It's a great setup for like a horror film, which some people have said this is kind of it's like a horror thriller element. I think it's thriller. This I wouldn't say it goes into horror. Caleb Smith. 
Yes? Please approach the console and face the screen. Oh. <laughs> Take your key card. They're like unnerving. You may now enter the residence. Just this like compound, right? So see, we don't need long dialogue. We don't need him talking to himself, saying, you know, this is weird, or should I go in here? Just visuals. And then I don't know where this house is, but this is like amazing. Again, props to the location Whoa. supervisor. We can empathize with him. You know, he's a fish out of water. He's used to being in this tech company, not in this, this uh, location. Whoa. And we know how awkward it is when it's like work related. You don't want to make a mistake. And I like, like, you know, he supposedly won this lottery and, and nobody's come to greet him, even. Look at that. Smith. Hey. Dude! <laughs> Been so looking forward to this week with you. Come in, come on in. Thanks. You want something to eat or drink after your journey? No, no, thanks. Sure. I'm fine. Yeah. To be honest, I thought we'd have a breakfast together, but um when I have a heavy night, I uh, compensate the next morning. Exercise, antioxidants, you know. Sure. <sighs> wasn't a good party? Party? Yeah, wasn't there a party? There wasn't a party. Sorry. <laughs> Caleb, I'm just gonna throw this out there so it's said, okay? You're freaked out. I am? Yeah, you're freaked out by the helicopter and the mountains and the house because it's all so super cool. And you're freaked out by me to be meeting me, having this conversation in this room at this moment, right? And I get that, I get the moment you're having, but dude, can we just get past that? Yeah, okay. Yeah? Yes, uh, yeah. It's good to meet you, Nathan. This is Oscar Isaac, who's in Dune. It's good to meet you too, Caleb. It's just so creepy, you just feel well, the tension. the first thing I should do is explain your past. Now, it's simple enough. It opens some doors and it doesn't open others. And that just makes everything easy for you, right? I guess it's for you, Caleb. Mm. And I love like the tech versus like nature. It. Like the house couldn't it's be more techy, but the environment is like all nature. The bathroom right back here. Just all everything best. in the visuals is telling you Cupboards. exactly the whole theme. It's subterranean. It's not cozy. It's claustrophobic. No, no way. I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking this is really cool. And I want to talk to you about what I'm researching. I want to share it with you. Old NDA. Non-disclosure agreement. Hmm. Take your time, read it over. The signee agrees to regular data audit with unlimited access to confirm that no disclosure of information has taken place in public or private forums using any means of communication, including but not limited to that which is disclosed orally or in written or electronic form. <laughs> I think I need a lawyer. It's standard. It doesn't feel very standard. <laughs> okay, it's not standard. What can I tell you, Caleb? You don't have to sign it. You know, we can spend the next few days just shooting pool, getting drunk together, bonding. And when you discover what you've missed out on in about a year, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. When you're forced to sign an NDA, I don't think it's uh, so, binding. Do you know what the Turing test is? It's when a human interacts with a computer. And if the human doesn't know they're interacting with a computer, the test is passed. And what does the pass tell us? And that is the first 10 minutes of Ex Machina. And it goes so fast. It's just like, oh my gosh, some of the fastest 10 minutes. And that is the whole movie. We've already gotten to it. The Turing test. So he says, when you're talking to a computer 
as a human and can you tell that you're talking with a computer? He's in this super like tech bunker. It's creepy, but it's surrounded by nature, but they're a million miles away. This guy is a little off, right? Cause he says, oh, you had a big party last night? No, but just, you know, got raging drunk. Like, okay, like everything about it is creepy. Like, you know, not being able to unlock the doors unless you have the key card. I mean, everything is just like tension, tension, tension. And it's a great like futuristic uh, feel to it. And if I'm not mistaken, this kind of had like a lower budget too, but you wouldn't know it. I could be wrong about that. Um, and then, you know, we're gonna quickly get to the next scene, which will bring us fully into exactly what the movie is. But all along we're seeing man in nature and versus machine, right? With the helicopter, with all these doors, with the security, with signing the NDA. I think you should watch Ex Machina. And if you go to write something futuristic, just make sure that you have, I mean, really for any of the scripts, but sometimes with futuristic things, people, when I read them, they get very excited about all their cool little technology. So they're like, oh, but it has this cool thing and this creature and this, uh, you know, futuristic device. But ultimately we need to have kind of a theme. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say, you know, technology is bad or nature is good or can, there can never be a, a link between the two or there can be a link? Make sure whatever that point is that it's expressed in the movie, in every scene. And then at the end of the movie, and I, I don't do spoilers here, so I won't, won't discuss that, but at the end of the movie, it's clear that going back all the way to the very first scene, their theme was carried through. I hope that you guys go out and write a great sci-fi, something AI, and it's gonna get even more difficult, mostly because you're going to be competing with an AI actually writing the script. That's what's so interesting is like, every time we move up in technology, we're in the, in the old future, you know, the old past is new future. It made sense in my head before it came out of my mouth, but I think you get what I'm saying. So how will you create the next generation of tech and futuristic uh, movies and sci-fi and make it interesting and have a point and be emotionally driven? I will leave us with that and I will see you for the next one, but uh, keep watching this. I think I'm gonna watch it right now because it's, it's just so intriguing. I can't help continue to watch. I'll see you next time. Bye.